and thank you, Lydia, for the introduction. Uh, thank you, Maria, for the invitation. And I, I will try to be short because I'm the last one and I know you are all starving. So yeah, I'm the um, uh, artistic program manager of uh, La Gaîté Lyrique. Uh, La Gaîté Lyrique is a cultural art center created in 2011, uh, located in the city center of Paris. Uh, it's a place dedicated to uh, alternative music and futures. So I've entitled this uh, presentation, This is not a museum. Uh, this is not a museum as we can understand it traditionally, but a place that belongs to this new generation of institution, both a living space, but also a place for uh, creation, practice, and sharing of new popular cultures, emerging artists, and digital practice. So it's a place conceived uh, as a physical space, but also as a media since the beginning. So it's mirroring uh, contemporary issues, embracing the artistic communities located on the peripheries of power, the margin, and promoting pioneering cultures. Uh, it's also a space uh, conceived for experience, valorizing peer-to-peer uh, -peer, um, learning and the figures of autodidacts, uh, characteristic of the internet culture. So a decade later, we, we have celebrated our 10 years anniversary uh, this year. The Gete Lyric has become a media center exploring post-internet cultures. Uh, that is to say, uh, exploring um, uh, the world, uh, the digital world, and the spirit of the digital world, post is uh, to say with the digital world and not after. Uh, so this is a term that describes an artistic practice that could be online but also offline uh, to show uh, the impact of technologies on our everyday lives. Uh, this term took on its full meaning here at La Gaîté Lyrique in 2017 uh, when the collective of choreographers and visual artists called La Horde uh, in residence at La Gaîté Lyrique coined the term of post-internet dances. Sorry. It's okay. Um, so it concerned all those autodidact dances that have resonated online and especially on YouTube, and created dance communities all over the world. Uh, it's even stronger now with all the TikTok dances that we can uh, observe. Uh, then we created a post-internet uh, dance school called Au Les Pieds, and included dance as Akan, Jumpstyle, uh, Shuffle, that are all club dances uh, born in the UK in the 19s, and uh, in the Netherlands as well, and then I've been uh, reactivated through YouTube and through a community of uh, self-toast uh, dancers. So we're gonna see a small teaser of the uh, uh, of the post-internet dance school called Ole Pied. So uh, be aware, it's quite uh, loud, quite intense. <laughs> Uh, here it's an immersive installation, uh, uh, still by La Horde, uh, the collective uh, of uh, choreographers that they did uh, in our immersive uh, space um, at the Gaete Lyrique in 2018 and uh, about their research on their post-internet dances. And we continued this story uh, by including other older dances, uh, but still non-academic ones, uh, not represented in classic institutions, uh, such as voguing, crump, walking, dancehall. So all have in common uh, to be political dances uh, involved, uh, invented by minorities to express themselves and to fight for more equality. But what interests us uh, here is how those dances have used today's social network to exist and being visible. So we call this program Body Moving, uh, with one dance competition uh, and workshop every month. So, yeah. 
Uh, music also represents a big part of our project. So we have a big concert hall with uh, about 100 concerts a year from pop, rap, electronic, and more experimental music. So we have this big immersive uh, room uh, with a capacity of 800 people, and that is completely modular to us concerts, shows, and dance battle. We also host uh, one creation residency per year uh, with artists such as Phoenix, Sun, or Flavien Berger uh, to create immersive and immersive music shows. Uh, here you have a video of um, Culture Club uh, that is a screening program that we created during the COVID time uh, with uh, dance shows as well and, uh, and podcasts and, uh, and workshops. Um, we also have this uh, online and, phys and physical uh, music festival with the French German Media Arte, uh, with here a concert of Prudence in the old theater of La Gatellerique. Exhibition experience. So we also have two exhibition spaces, uh, one of uh, 1,000 square meters dedicated to monograph, and another one that is quite new, dedicated to a creation and immersive uh, experience of uh, 400 square meters. Uh, so for the past three years now, we use uh, the term exhibition experience. I, I've seen that Fee also uses this term. Uh, so this concept is to uh, develop a new way to create and design exhibition, which breaks the classical frontier between the visitor and the artwork in many different ways. Uh, oh, sorry. For example, here uh, we made this exhibition in 2020. It's an exhibition called Faire Corps by Adrien, M, and Clerby. Uh, we conceive this exhibition as a performance exhibition. So the visitor is fuzzing and absorbing in, uh, with this interactive special artwork that immersed ourselves in clouds of pixels and rays of lights uh, that resonate with us like a live creature. Creature, sorry. Uh, we also organize um, guided tours with dancers. Uh, another medium that we use a lot is uh, mapping and projection with this uh, current exhibition uh, at La Gatellerique uh, that is called Orae by Sabrina Raté, which is a Canadian uh, artist that produces uh, architectural videos. Uh, through analog uh, video, photogrammetry, animation, and mapping. We also have this uh, creation uh, in the 400 square meter space uh, by visual system. So it's uh, based mainly on the principle of synesthesia and uh, conceived as an allegory for inner forests. And here is a current uh, exhibition installation uh, by an artist, a uh, French artist located uh, in the UK and uh, called Nelly Ben Ayoun. Uh, so she conceives this installation, uh, Shiny Gold, uh, where uh, she explores sciences and knowledge through design, interactive design, and uh, immersive set design. Uh, so here she explores the interconnection of energies and our interdependence uh, to the sun. So new narratives, it's a new program that is a laboratory of uh, forms of creation for new uh, non-linear learnings, uh, such as podcasts, binaural sounds, uh, but also, of course, XR uh, experiences, post-cinema, and the creation between sciences and arts. So here you can uh, see a photograph of uh, Switch. It's a series of uh, binaural performances that uh, uses ASMR as a narrative way. Uh, here it's an installation called The Smallest of Words, um, inspired uh, from the COVID time. It's made by Bettina Kajalan, Brunner, and uh, uh, Johan Soler Adian. Uh, and that is part of a collective show on XR and curated by uh, Fabula uh, last year at La Gaete Lyrique. We also have um, 
a critical uh, design program uh, called NoLab. So it's uh, two times a week with talks and workshops. Uh, it's mainly to bring critical design on uh, the impact of uh, technologies on our everyday lives. So of course we had to talk about NFT, but also digital sobriety, uh, internet culture, uh, agriculture, and uh, digital alternative networks. And uh, last, we have uh, this program, uh, this narrative program called Capitaine Future, uh, that is a family and art-oriented children program. We position uh, children at the core of the Getty Lyric project. Um, so it's a fi Captain Future, it's a fictional character used to talk about our relationship to technologies in a narrative way and draw uh, new desirable features. So it consist constitutes a laboratory of creation also for shows, concerts, and installations, such as uh, this one uh, by Cal McDonald, McDonald in 2014. And also, uh, this show, uh, Worms, uh, created this year by Music Chien and Shobo Shobo. Uh, to conclude, oh, and here uh, we can see also, like, a workshop is uh, also a really important part of our project uh, to appropriate uh, technologies uh, with uh, new creative tools. Uh, so to conclude, uh, so La Gatelerique is a place considering digital approach in a very broad way uh, and in a very uh, cross-disciplinary uh, perspective. So, um, for example, as you saw, an artwork related to internet culture, but that has not used technology, can also uh, be considered as being part of uh, this atlas of uh, digital artistic uh, cultures practice. It's also a political project towards the non-academic cultures. It's also a, a place uh, called for, uh, known for uh, LGBTQI plus um, communities. Uh, there's a, a f this focus on digital practice and uh, because there are still rather uh, separated from the art world in France, although it's uh, tending to change uh, the last uh, past years. And of course, it's a place that values the experience and re-engagement re of bodies at the center of our practice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you.